Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a lollipop chart, uh, more specifically a vertical lollipop chart. And what this basically is, is a column chart. And all it's doing is you've got this thin line that goes straight up and at the end you've got your circle that represents your points. You can see I have my items here and each one of them is represented by a lollipop. Now this particular set of data, there it's it's being randomized. Uh, there's a random number generator function here. Ran between is going to generate a number between 10 and 100. Every time I press the F9 key, you notice that uh, there's a new uh, bar chart that gets replotted here. And this is just basically a column chart, and we're adding some error bars to kind of simulate uh, this particular lollipop uh, feature. So let me show you how it's done. I'm going to go ahead and copy this range of data here. Let's select this range. Control C to copy, go into a new sheet here, and then I'm just going to go here and then Control V to paste. And it's pasted in the formatting and also that particular function, the ran between function 10 and 100. What I'm going to do now is create a bar, a column chart here. So I'm going to click anywhere within the range of data, go to insert, and go to chart the charts group, and go and select just a 2D column chart. Now, when I select this column chart, when I put this column chart here, it doesn't really look like it's doing too much, right? But I'm let me go ahead and kind of increase the size a little bit so it looks a little bit better. Um, you can view it a little bit better. And what we need to do is we need to add error bars to this chart. And so once I selected uh, my series of data, I'm going to go into uh, this plus sign. I'm going to add the chart elements. And what I want to do is add an error bar. And basically what it's done is it's given me these error bars right at the top. I want to do a little bit more configuration on the error bar, so I'm going to go ahead and select the error bars here, click that arrow, and click on more options. And the panel is going to show up here where I need to change uh, some of the parameters. So what I want to do is I want to have the direction in minus, and so basically it's going to take off that top portion of it. If I click outside here, you can notice that it's gone there. Let me go ahead and click back on uh, the error bar here and go back into the error bar options. Once it's minus, what I want to do for the end style is I don't want to have a cap on the end style. So uh, I'm going to take that particular button there, select that. And for the percentage, I want to make that 100%. Uh, right now it's 5%, so it's doing an error bar 5% here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that error bar to 100%. And so now that line, instead of going 5%, uh, down from the top, it's going to go all the way down to the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 100. Let me go ahead and press the tab key and you now you notice that that bar has gone all the way down there. So how do we get the circle at the top? What we need to do is go to the um, a fill in line and under the fill in line we're going to change the beginning arrow type and instead of having it uh, default to nothing, we're going to have it default to this oval arrow. And once that's there, now you can see the, kind of the uh, beginnings of that circle. Let me go ahead and click you know, outside and see it. So now that circle is kind of small. What we want to do is we want to increase the size a little bit. Let me go ahead and click back onto the arrow bar and I'm going to increase the size here. Let me go ahead and scroll down here. So begin arrow size, I'm going to change that to uh, the largest size here, uh, size 9. And now you can see that that circle, the lollipop version portion of it, is a little bit bigger. Now, having these black uh, lines, maybe I want to change the color. So I can change the color to something a little bit more colorful, uh, orange. And you can see now it is orange. Let me click outside. You can see I have my, uh, air, my, have my lollipop uh, chart, but I want to get rid of the bar chart portion now. And that's actually fairly easy. We're just going to make it disappear, uh, just not have a fill color there. It's still there. But what we're going to do is we're going to select the bar chart. You can see the bar chart is selected right now. So now I can go under the color here. Let me go ahead and scroll up and see if I'm in the right one. Okay, I'm in the border. Uh, I can change the border, but let me go ahead and just change the fill color first. And I don't want a fill color, no fill, and that gets rid of it. Now, you may think that that's all done, but it's not. If I click outside of the chart, uh, actually, it's done. it's also uh, taken off the border. So, but uh, let's see, that's gone. But just in case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the border color to none. Uh, it's done it automatically and the color it's done it for maybe white but I'm going to have no line so just in case let me go ahead and click that just in case uh, things change later on that line does not show up anymore so basically we have um, I'm going to click into there we have no fill which that blue color gets rid of and then the border we don't have a border 
a line color anymore, so there's no line there. So it's pretty much done now. All I need to do is do some other type of uh, uh, cleanup by getting rid of these grid lines. Let me go ahead and select those, press delete, and uh, maybe I'll put a title up here. I'll put uh, lollipop uh, chart. And then I've finished my lollipop chart. And so basically, if I press the F9 key, and now you notice it changes a little bit. But this just kind of gives a little more colorful or a fun type of chart to put together, uh, this lollipop chart, uh, which is a vertical lollipop chart. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.